Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you're here with us to celebrate this very special worship service. Those of you who are participating virtually or those of you who are in the sanctuary, uh, this is such a special day. Um, this is, we're here at um, uh, Lamar High School. The auditorium here was where the first service of St. Luke's was held on November 11th, 1945. And I can only imagine what it was like for those people, those people who had come to this place sort of out at the very edge of town to be a part of this brand new congregation. As a, as a pastor who had the privilege of uh, planting a new church some years ago, I know what, it, what it's like and, and just how I, I can remember my own heart beating and being so excited and so full of hopes and dreams uh, about what God would do through that congregation. Well, I, I'm sure that Derwood Fleming and those people who gathered that first day felt that same thing. And I hope as we worship here today, maybe you can feel just a little of that same excitement. So we want to begin by paying tribute to all of those who have been so much a part and to, to paint just a little picture of all that's gone on in the 75 years there at St. Luke's. So uh, take a listen.
So hear now this call to worship from Psalm 105, the King James Version. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. We're uh, going to be mirroring that very first worship service today. And so our first hymn is the opening hymn of that service uh, 75 years ago. Uh, join as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Good morning, everyone. I am Ann Pierce Arnett, now a retired United Methodist diaconal minister. And as a two and a half year old, I was present at the first Sunday worship service of St. Luke's Methodist with my parents, George and Betty Pierce, who are charter members of this congregation. Our responsive reading this morning comes from the 1939 Methodist hymnal, which the St. Luke's congregation read together that first Sunday in November, 1945. It is based on Romans 12. I will read the text that says leader, and you may read along with me the bold text that will appear on your screen. Let us now raise our voices together as we honor and remember all the saints of our wonderful congregation. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to everyone that is among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every one the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with Christian love in honor preferring one another, distributing to the needs of the saints. So be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. I'm standing here in front of our fellowship hall, which was the first sanctuary where folks worshiped on this campus starting in 1951. The contemporary worship community still worships in that space to this day. In 1959, worship began in our new sanctuary, and in a reflection in the 1970s, Lurlyn Fleming, the wife of Derwood Fleming, our first pastor, reflected on the day that the spire was raised. I'll never forget the day they raised the spire. Derwood was out of town at Lakeview, and our son, John Hugh, and I decided to get stereo pictures of each phase of its hoisting. Even then, we knew it was history-making a symbol of a loving and giving congregation of people who gave and who are giving, not only money, but of themselves. I remember a carpool coming up Westheimer years ago, way out about Boss Road. It was way out then. We saw the spire exactly centered in Westheimer before other buildings obscured its view. And one little boy said in the carpool, hey, look, there's a launching pad or a rocket. One of our little St. Lukers picked it up and quickly said, it looks like a church spire to me. Pray God that our children will always see a church spire in their lives, even as we and our children were privileged to be a part of building a church right in the very middle of our lives. Let us pray together. God, what a joyful and momentous day this is. We give you thanks for all that has happened over the past 75 years at St. Luke's. By your grace, Lord, this church is more than a couple of buildings. It's a community of fellowship, of worship, and a launching pad of service to our neighbors. We're thankful for all the folks that have been a part of St. Luke's, for their commitment to following the guidance and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and for what they've contributed to the church through their presence, their witness, and their love. We thank you for the marvelous ministries that have been birthed in this community the Sunday school classes and small groups where folks have forged deep friendships and a relationship with you, the children's and student ministries that have supported our children and taught them about the mercy of Christ, the outreach through CCSC, Amazing Place, The Woodshop, Nick Finnegan Counseling Center, and so many other programs that have made your love tangible. As we celebrate our past and rejoice in our present, we look with hope to the future. We pray that long after we've departed this earth into your arms, that this church will still be a beacon of light to the world, that the foundation we are continuing to lay will transform hearts and lives. Make this church a blessing to those around us and embolden us to move forward with strength toward what lies ahead. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Let us continue now in our worship with an anthem sung by our chancel choir in 1977, Oh, Be Joyful in the Lord. Hear now these words from 1 Chronicles 15, 25 through 29, and also 1 Chronicles 16, verses 1 through 3 and 7 through 13. So David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of the thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with rejoicing. And because God helped the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and also were all of the Levites who were carrying the Ark and the singers and Shenaniah and the leader of all the music of the singers and David wore a linen ephod. So all of Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouting to the sound of the horn, trumpets, cymbals, and made loud music on harps and lyres. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, Michel, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing and she despised him in her heart. 
They brought in the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before God. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he distributed to every person in Israel, man and woman alike, to each a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then on that day, David first appointed the singing of praises to the Lord by Asaph and his kindred. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O oh, offspring of his servant Israel, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These piggy banks represent the 75th anniversary piggy bank challenge done by our children's ministries, where each family was challenged to raise $75 to celebrate the church's anniversary. St. Luke's has always been a place where music and fine arts has been recognized as a wonderful way to worship God. One of the highlights since I've been here was two years ago in 2018 when our Friends of Music commissioned and then we performed a piece by Howard Goodall. Please enjoy this excerpt conducted by the composer.
Well, good morning. Welcome to this uh, um, special worship service. It's been so awesome already as we have uh, been remembering and celebrating. I want to uh, invite you to let us know that you're here by checking in. You can check in either on St. Luke's app, which um, if you don't have, you can download in any of the app stores and, and let us know that you're here. Or uh, on, if you're watching on our website, you can click the little button in the upper right-hand corner of your uh, screen that says connect. And there's a way for you to uh, give us your information and, and let us know that you're here, especially if you're a guest. We'd love to be able to connect with you in a more personal way. I, uh, I stand here uh, today in the pulpit and preach in the pulpit. That's unusual for me if you aren't a regular here at St. Luke's. But I do that um, to see if maybe I can capture just a little of the uh, amazing Holy Spirit that worked through those who uh, stood in this pulpit before. Uh, the founding pastor, Derwood Fleming, uh, Kenneth Shamblin, um, Walter Underwood, and James W. Moore who broke open God's word for us and spoke to our hearts in such powerful ways over the last 75 years. So uh, I'm honored to, to be here and, and be a part of this today. Let's join in prayer. Oh God, open us up. Open our eyes that we might see and our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts, God, that we might feel. And then, oh Lord, open our hands that we might serve. Amen. So uh, we've been talking about parties this month, uh, thinking about this particular celebration. And the one that we are looking at in scripture today is one of my favorites. Um, let me give you just the background so you understand what's going on. Um, the, the Ark of the Covenant, which is the box that contains the tablets of that Moses, the Ten Commandment tablets, um, had been captured from the, Isra the uh, children of Israel army by the Philistines. And after a period of time, because of a number of things, certainly King David's um, victories in battle and his great diplomacy, and because of a plague that came upon the Philistines, uh, they chose to return the ark uh, to, um, to Israel. And when the ark came back to Israel, King David was still worried about it. And so he kept it in homes outside of the city of Jerusalem because he believed that it may be that the city of Jerusalem would be sacked. Well, um, after a while, as a time of greater peace and prosperity began to, to grow, David decided it was time to bring the Ark of the Covenant out of those homes outside the city into the city itself and make it, at the, make it the center of their community and, and religious life. And so what did he do? But he threw a parade. He threw a party, and uh, there was there were musicians galore as the as the Ark of the Covenant is being brought in by the Levites. There are are trumpet players and harpists and lyres and cymbals and singers. And my favorite part, King David himself, um, uh, dancing in front of the Ark as it's brought into the, into the city. Uh, wearing, very frankly, a loincloth. It says a linen ephod in, in the scripture. And I just love that part. And so I thought I might uh, recreate that here for you today. And uh, I actually can hear you even through the miracle of, of, um, of live streaming, shouting, no, please don't. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. But I do want us to think about what that experience might have been like 3,000 years ago as, as the community was just so full of joy and excitement and hope. Uh, there was no temple yet. Uh, there's no church. So they put the Ark of the Covenant in a tent. Uh, the, the temple was just a, a dream in David's um, heart at that time. But the, the joy and celebration was, was palpable. You know, it may be a stretch to think that on that day just 75 years ago, when 450 people gathered in the uh, auditorium of Lamar High School uh, to begin a brand new church, that there was that same sense of excitement, but I bet there was. Uh, what a celebration that must have been. There was no church building, so they had to be in this borrowed auditorium. Um, 
but the Holy Spirit was there, and the same dreams and hopes were there. What I'd like to do today is to, to think about how we celebrate, celebrate those 75 years, how they celebrated 3,000 years ago when they brought the ark into the city of Jerusalem, and, and see what we might learn from them. Here's the first thing we can do when we celebrate. We celebrate by thanking God for the people who have been this church. You know, uh, in the, the scripture that we, that we read, I left out a really a part of it. I cut it out um, really for the sake of our associate pastors who are reading scripture. It goes this way, Asaph was the chief, and next to him in rank were Zechariah and Jahatil and Shemimeroth and Jehiel and Mattathiah and Eliab and Benaiah and Obed-Edom and Jehiel, and these were to play the lyre and the harp. Now, I, I think that's uh, funny, but when you read these historical books of Scripture, what you find is there are lots and lots of just names, names of people that you have no idea who they really are, but they're listed there. Why? Well, because they're not just names. Those are people. And uh, while we might not know who they are, God knows who they are, and they're important, right? Right? I, I, I have been rereading um, just these last weeks this book, um, Upon This Rock. It was uh, the written for the 50th anniversary of St. Luke's, and it is full of names. You can have one if you want uh, one. Um, you can just let us know here at the church, and we'd be glad to, to get you one. You can come by and pick it up, or we'll get it to you somehow. But I, I read it, and it's so interesting. It's, that it's like it carries you back in time to, to the, the founding, and you see all of these names of people who did this or did that or led this or led that or offered this or offered that. And, you know, I don't know most of those names. I know some of them for sure, but I don't know most of those names. But gosh, I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for all that uh, God has done through those people. I think of people like Grace and Joe Ross. Uh, Grace was the uh, director of Christian education. Uh, Derwood Fleming hired her here, and she made such an impact for so many years on the families of people here at St. Luke's. Uh, Joe and Grace had no children of their own, and um, so the children of St. Luke's were their own children. That's the way they viewed it. And when Joe and Grace died, they uh, left their entire state to St. Luke's. Um, as, as a way of saying, this is our family. These are our people. I could go on and on, but I, I, I realize how many I would end up leaving out. At the end of today's service, there is a, a postlude that was written especially for today by Rob Landis. And um, as I hope you'll make sure and stay and listen to that postlude, but as you do, we'll be scrolling the names of our charter members of St. Luke's. Um, those are obviously aren't all the people we give thanks to God for, um, but they represent those, those people on whose shoulders we stand as we seek to do God's work in this place. So we celebrate by, by remembering and thanking God for the people. Here's the second thing. We celebrate by remembering the wonderful works that God has done. Not wonderful works that we have done, but the wonderful works that God has done. Uh, listen to what the scripture said today that we read, verse, beginning with verse 7. Then on that day, David first appointed the singing of praises to the Lord by Asaph and his kindred. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell all of his wonderful works. And then on in verse 12, remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles. You know, when I watched that video that we played earlier in the service today that our team put together, it made me cry. I've, I've watched like three times, four times, and it makes me cry every time 
when I think about what God has done here. There's the big stuff, you know, like new facilities that are built and that that we use to do God's work in this place. I think about uh, the the, uh, new outreach ministries that that are launched, Um, the incredible worship experiences put together. But honestly, when I think about the real wonderful works of God that that are happened through the ministry of St. Luke's, um, they are are smaller and, and more subtle and more personal, but maybe more powerful. I, um, I think the impact, the wonderful works of God are in the student who comes to know Christ personally for the very first time on a youth retreat or a youth trip. I think about the, the uh, family who walks away from our children's ministry program every Sunday, uh, so grateful but that their children and their family are being shaped by, uh, by a God of grace and love uh, rather than a God of anger and judgment. I think about the singer who is standing in our choir and has found authentic community, a place to really belong and to work side by side for something that that is offered to God and that sense of saying, this is my place, I belong here. I, I, uh, I think about the adult who takes disciple Bible study and in, in week 20, you know, they'd been in their church all of their lives. And then in week 20 of disciple Bible study says, oh my gosh, I, I think I get it now. I think I understand the, this narrative of, of, of God's love that we find in scripture. I think the wonderful works of God are in the woman who is in the hospital week after week after week after week, month after month after month after month. And somebody from the church is seeing her most days of every week. I, I think about the people who, who look at the list of prayer requests every single day. And either in the, the prayer room here at St. Luke's or at home, they pray those names and are vessels of, of God's uh, power and love. I, I think about the man who is going through a divorce and he uh, comes to St. Luke's and here he finds a friend who will walk through him through that difficult time. I think about that ordinary family who faces the unimaginable, the, the loss of a child and, and sits in our worship service every Sunday, just clinging to the hope and, and the promise of eternal life. And that's how they get how they get through the days. I think about the young couple who comes to uh, find us a, a adult Sunday school class here at St. Luke's, and and that class becomes their friends, and they they have children. All 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 of the couples have children near the same time, and those children grow up together. And these people are the are the foundation of of the community of their life. I think about the senior adult who uh, comes to this church every Sunday and sits in the same place in the same pew every single Sunday and finds here uh, an anchor in a world that is changing all around them. I think about the the woman who walked away from the church 20 years ago because of of a trauma or a disappointment or discrimination and catches a worship service on television and Uh, comes back again, comes back home again, and is welcomed with open arms. Friends, the the wonderful works of God are not in the big things, but in those personal small things that happen here in, in this place through these people. That's, that's the wonderful works of God. You know, some years ago, a, um, a young person asked me, we were thinking about the, the ministry, ordained ministry, um, do you think you have lived a life well lived? And first of all, I was a little annoyed because I kind of thought I still had a lot of life left and I didn't need to be thinking about whether I had a life well lived. But I thought about it and I thought, my goodness, what, to the extent that I've given a part of my life to the church, 
this community of people who walk through life's joys and pains together, um, embracing the very presence of God as they walk together, oh, that's a life well lived. Um, and I'm so honored uh, that I can be a part of that. We celebrate by uh, thanking God for God's wonderful works. Third, we, um, we celebrate by blessing others any way we can. Uh, listen again to uh, the scripture, verse two. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord and he distributed to every person in Israel, man and woman alike, to each a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Celebration was something to be shared, to be shared with everyone. Everyone around was to, uh, to uh, uh, get a, a piece of the celebration. Friends, uh, this church is, is one whose DNA is built around um, making a difference in our community, that we recognize that God has placed us here, has provided resources for us to be used not just for us, but for others, right? Whether, whether you're thinking about St. Luke's Day School or the after-school program, or Amazing Place, or Christian Community Service Center, or Bridges Academy, or um, Revision, uh, or Nick Finnegan Counseling Center, or our merger with Gethsemane, or the launching of the Story Houston, or, or our, our uh, creation and partnership of Connect Community, or our African Fellowship, or our Oasis uh, Worship Community in Spanish, or this year, uh, the creation of PX Project, the Workforce Development Program. Uh, so much of, of who we are, so much of our DNA is built around being able to make a difference in the community. And so that is the way we celebrate. We celebrate by offering of ourselves um, to others. You know, one of, one of the most powerful images that I have uh, found, the stories that I have found, comes from the fourth century. And uh, the last um, pagan uh, emperor of Rome was Julian, often called Julian the Apostate, because he'd been a Christian and turned back to the gods, uh, the pagan gods of Rome. And he, he kept regretting that Christianity was growing so fast and because it was pulling people away from these Roman gods. And he called Christians atheists because they didn't believe in the Roman gods. And here's what he writes uh, in the fourth century. Atheism, which is what he called the Christian faith, has been specially advanced through the loving service rendered to strangers and through their care for the burial of the dead it is a scandal that there is not a single Jew who is a beggar and that the godless Galileans, that means the Christians, care not only for their own poor, but for ours as well. While those who belong to us look in vain for the help that we should render them. <laughs> it, it is not just the DNA of St. Luke's, but the DNA of the whole Christian faith that, um, that is built for others. Uh, it's why we have, uh, for our 75th anniversary, uh, we created this Serve 75 booklet, 75 different ways we can be involved in service to our community so that our 75th anniversary party is designed to be a party for others as well as for us. It's why these children collected these marvelous piggy banks uh, to, to be given for others. So we celebrate by giving ourselves away to the community around us. So where do we go from here, friends? Where do, where do we go from here? What is ahead for us? What do you think the next 75 years holds? And how should we face it? Uh, I'm reminded of a, of a funny story about the pastor, an older pastor who's, who's visiting with a young man thinking about getting married. And he says to the young man, well, um, son, I don't know what you think marriage is like, but whatever it is, it's not like that. Um, 
you know, we don't know what the future holds. Whatever we think it's going to be like, it's it's uh, not going to be like that at all. We if we've learned nothing else in the year 2020. Uh, we've learned that. So how do we take the gospel forward? How do we we continue to move the DNA of this congregation forward, carrying the gospel out in word and in deed? I think the secret is found in verse 11 of our scripture today. It says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. You know, I think about the last 75 years and all of the challenges that have been faced. And they've been faced simply by seeking the presence of God, trusting in the strength of God. You know, um, the next 75 years aren't going to be like the last 75 we live in a different world, a different age. We live in a time when the question isn't, what church do you go to? But whether you go to church at all or whether you believe at all, we have much work that needs to be done. We're surrounded by all sorts of challenges. But we'll face them. And we'll face them by uh, seeking God's presence continually and by trusting in God's strength. You know, I don't think Derwood Fleming um, danced uh, in a loincloth on that first Sunday on the processional uh, down the aisles of uh, Lamar High School, but I know his heart danced. And what I find so interesting is that the hymn that they chose to sing is so apropos for us today. It is a it is a prayer. Uh, the text was written by Harry Emerson Fosdick. Just at that, that time, it was a very, um, a very new hymn. And so I simply want our closing prayer to be um, the words of that hymn. I'm going to just read one verse, and then I want to invite you to sing it with me. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church's story. Bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Amen. So let us sing together. God of grace and God of glory.
So St. Luke's on this marvelous anniversary, hear this benediction, this blessing. May God the eternal keep you in love with each other that the peace of Christ may abide in your home. Go serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Go bear witness to the love of God in this world that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>